So I got some lavender and a rosemary plant from the Bonnie's guy while at work and I planted out my lavender today. I got one there and over here by the gate. But Chad and I went to Pembroke, Kentucky today and went and bought a tiller implement for the tractor. So he's down there tilling me up a patch for okra and melons and whatever else I want to grow in a low maintenance spot down there. Because I've really got no way to take water to it. Uh, but I do have landscape fabric. And I'm going to burn holes in it. And then I got like deer netting to deter deer, dogs, and chickens from going down there. So that's what he's doing right now. I've got both the raised beds filled up. Still smells kind of ripe out here, but it's getting better. Uh, my nasturtiums are in bloom. And I also got the rest of the tomatoes and peppers planted out. Not all of the tomatoes survived, but that's okay. I will let them grow out to more than one uh, main stem on the plants that just like one or two survived. That way I can make sure I get plenty of that variety. I've done another dill harvest and now I'm just letting it go to seed so I can have dill weed or dill seed. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I also got some basil and there's another one right there I'm not sure what to do with. But yeah. Um. I did forget to mention it took the Ella campaign maybe six to eight weeks for it to start germinating and you're supposed to cold stratify a gay feather in the fridge for two weeks i think i had mine in there for about a month um so yes just so you're aware i forgot to mention that earlier well it's been a few weeks later since the beginning of this video so i'll just pick up where it's at i'm not sure what these sprouts are in here where the uh the actress, the gay uh, feather, supposed, I don't know if that's what they look like or not. I haven't looked it up, but the Ella campaign seems to be doing pretty good for the most part. Some of them don't look, did not come up, but a lot of them did. I got about three, yeah, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight Ella campaigns, so they've done pretty good. Oh, look at this beautiful cyclamen I picked up for $5 at Kroger. Um, I did transplant out some of my squash already. <clears throat> if I do start more squash from seed, it's going to be summer squash because I'm afraid I won't have enough time to grow winter squash. Uh, between the cats and the chickens, they like to sit up on these railing. They've been knocking it down. I got one spaghetti squash that survived that knocked down, but the rest of these did not get knocked down. Um, so I got some acorn squash, some delicata squash, zapella. Zappolito de Tronco squash. Um, I'm going to try to transplant those out this morning. I already got some transplanted down here. And they say squash don't like their fruits mess with so much. But <clears throat> I had to try something because only one plant came up. And I'll show you that one plant that came up from me direct selling seeds. Look at it. It looks great. Yeah, those are a bunch of plants. Looks like I got a couple of winter squashes. I planted the winter squashes along the edges that way they can vine over and I planted the summer squash in the center. That was a scallop squash mix that I put in there that did not go so I'm going to definitely re-sow those. And, oh and those on the edge there since I got that fence pretty close by it's yellow squash. I don't I think maybe I might get one out of there which is still going to be quite a bit of a harvest. I might go ahead and throw some more seeds in there just for good measure. Um, I am going to take the bug netting off when it starts to flower. It looks like it's starting to grow flowers on it, but they're not flowering yet. So I am not ready to do that because of the squash bugs. And then in this bed, I planted a zucchini mix in the middle. They don't look so good. Like nothing, nothing. So... I might as well just go ahead and fill this bed out with more summer squash seeds and see what happens. All of my kale, well I got like one kale left standing and I do need to pull some weeds. And then <clears throat> the parsley is doing okay too. Oh, let's go out to the melon patch and see what's going on. 
So if you do see, I have a Drake, and I decided to name him Jake the Drake. So I got this nice path mode for me down here so I don't have to worry about snakes jumping out at me. Because one day, I was in there looking at one of the raised beds, and between the 55-gallon barrels, a water moccasin lashed out at me. He got shot in the head. But that was pretty scary, so it's like... We thought, well, we'll just mow paths from here down to the melon patch and into the compost bin. That way I don't have to worry about snakes. But it looks like I got some zinnias popping up, sunflowers. Uh, don't know about any other flowers right now. But some of the melons are doing really, really good. Like those got flowers on them already. These I showed you when I started them. And then I p filled in the rest of the holes with random melon seeds and to be honest some of them did not pop up the first time so I just filled in others I was trying to keep them in alphabetical order so I could tell what varieties were what I ran out of my white lazana or whatever that was that I planted so I got uh, ordered off of Amazon from so right seeds a melon variety pack it was a five pack I paid like seven or eight bucks for it and it had like just typical honeydew it didn't have a specific variety listed on it. And then, guys, this is the bad part, is when I come down here, they got to come play. Um, they had a yellow... Guys! Hey! They had a yellow skin petite watermelon that I, sow that I sowed because I thought it's petite. It should grow fast. I should get a harvest off of it. I got yellow flush watermelon growing in there. I never a yellow skin watermelon so I'm growing both um, <coughs> then it came with a June canary or something like that melon I don't know but see still nothing came out of this hole but most holes have plants coming out of them and that's the goal so the storm did take up this non-breathable fabric and so we had to put down tent stakes to help hold it down better. And I got more fabric staples just in case they, that it happens again. Or I can go back and where I see fit, put more staples down, which I just might. But then I got, I, I want to say okra going down this row because I accidentally made a row too close together. I don't remember which, oh, it was that one. Anyway, yeah. And then my dragon tongue bush beans are doing great. The blue lake beans, I didn't think that they were doing as hot. And they're they're not, they're struggling a bit, but they look like they'll be all right. Uh, and then the contender beans. Some of the contender beans looks like they've been eaten or didn't come up, one of the two. I might have to fill in some more holes. Still got plenty of time to, uh, for bush beans to grow, so I'm not really worried about that. I might just come in and fill the rest of these holes in where nothing popped up with green beans. We eat a lot of green beans, and I'll make sure I get a good harvest in. But it does look like stuff could potentially be getting eaten, so it's about time to be putting up that uh, deer fence. But I've been... I took... A a little break off of YouTube been really busy around the house it's been hot out I lost motivation <laughs> and I did go take a five-day trip to northern Indiana to visit my family so that was nice I enjoyed my time I got to see my grandpa on my dad's side who turned 90 my aunts my uncle my cousins it was a really good time and we went floating and all sorts of stuff so I'm back at it. I'm ready to do some more YouTube videos, and I'm getting excited about the uh, Heartland Homestead picnic. And uh, yeah, so thank y'all for stopping by. I hope you're doing good in your garden ventures. Mine's doing okay. <laughs> I harvested beets, and I tried to quick pickle them. They didn't turn out good, so I don't suggest that. <laughs> but anyway, I love you, and so does Jesus. God bless.